Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing our 1858 match between uh, Johan Jakob Blumenthal and Paul Charles Morphy. And uh, this is uh, the 11th game. Uh, so far out of, out of the 10 games they played, Morphy won 8 and uh, Johan Jakob won 2. Uh, and uh, which is of course a problem for him like we mentioned as he wants to win the match and show that he is in fact uh, stronger than Morphy. Uh, unlike what we've seen in their uh, match eight years ago. So this one, uh, it's a great game. It features a brilliant move, uh, one that uh, is very deep. So uh, we will have a very, very nice pause the video moment. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the, for the intro. Uh, one more day uh, until we publish the first chapter of Age of Kaisa. Uh, but uh, that will have to wait for tomorrow. And I, I will make a separate video on that uh, to, to tell you guys more about it. So uh, let's check it out. Loventhal opens with e4. And for this game, Morphy goes for the Sicilian defense with c5 and the immediate d4. This is how they treated the Sicilian. In those days, we have captures, knight to f3, and now e6, uh, allowing the, the recapture. Now uh, we basically transpose into a normal Sicilian knight. Captures, we have knight to c6, uh, going into the Taimano variation, and now knight to b5, preparing knight to d6 with check. Uh, and here a6, Morphy just allows it, he knows there is nothing to worry about regarding this check, knight to d6 with check, bishop captures and now queen captures. And Morphy uh, immediately goes for a queen trade, queen to e7. So now uh, he either wants uh, to go straight into the endgame or white will uh, move the queen and then the game continues. So knight, uh, queen back to g3 and now knight to f6. Queen f6 is uh, what was played in modern days but this... Uh, uh, th this wasn't actually played all that much as white didn't really uh, get, get all that much from, from this. So there's not much theory on this. So we have knight to f6 and now knight to c3. And it is as of move 9 that this position has never been reached again. So d5, uh, Morphy uh, goes for the dream move. You, you play the Sicilian, you want to execute d5 as soon as possible. And here e5, not allowing Morphy an easy trade in the center. Knight to h5, attacking the queen and queen f3. And here already we've uh, reached the position from the thumbnail. Now the knight is under attack and Morphy defends it with g6. But this uh, this gives uh, uh, Lowenthal an opportunity for a brilliant move. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations on being brilliant. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's g4. Uh, but the g4 is much more complicated than it seems because uh, it seems like the knight has only one square, g7. But the truth is that the knight doesn't even have the g7 square. Uh, because if Morphy goes back knight to g7, then queen f6 wins the game. Uh, because, uh, well, the knight is under attack and you're going to win the knight. And there is not much you can do uh, to defend the knight. For example, if you defended it, just bishop h6 and again, the knight has nowhere to go. And if you trade queens, the knight still doesn't have anywhere to go and you're just going to lose the knight. Because the, pawns, uh, the pawn covers uh, all of the squares, the king covers the e8 square and the knight is just trapped. And it doesn't help if you don't defend it with the rook. Uh, if you try pretty much anything, just captures and captures. Again, the knight is trapped. Uh, and other than this, you could also castle, but it doesn't help. Bishop h6, threatening checkmate. And again, the knight has nowhere to go. Uh, you could move it. I mean, you have to move it if you want to defend against checkmate. Trading queens, again, just pawn captures. The knight has nowhere to go. And if this, then you happily trade queens and pick up the rook. Uh, bishop captures, king captures. And of course, you rob the exchange now uh, and winning the game. So uh, g4... Really a brilliant move. It's not to say that it's uh, not without counterplay. There is one move for Morphy that allows him reasonable counterplay, but Morphy didn't go for that one. D4 here uh, with the with the idea that you you give up a pawn and you go for some sort of a some sort of an end game. For example, captures, captures, and captures, and now queen b4. Uh, th this is possible, uh, but not to Morphy's liking. Uh, Morphy goes and knight captures on e5. He uh, grabs a pawn and he will grab yet another pawn for the price of one knight. So queen back to e2. Now both knights are under attack, and here you don't really have all that much to do. So Morphy grabs on g4. We have queen captures, and now e5. So Morphy grabbed two pawns. Uh, he sacrificed the knight, and he has a massive pawn center. He wants to start rolling those pawns down the board, as the white king is still in the center of the board. So it does make sense. Uh, queen to a4 with check. Bishop to d7, and now queen to b3, putting pressure on the b7 pawn. But Morphy said... 
Uh, I didn't sacrifice a piece to, you know, uh, count pawns, so I'm just going to continue with d4. Uh, we have queen captures on b7. Now, of course, if you capture, the queen can just capture the rook with check. So castles, now the rooks are nicely connected. And now knight to d5, attacking the queen here. Queen to d6, you still have to keep an eye on the bishop. Uh, and now comes bishop to g2. Again, uh, an excellent move by Lowenthal. This is the only move that gives white advantage. Uh, for example, you could try some bishop to e2 ideas with some crazy uh, plans of bishop captures, pawn captures, then you sacrifice the queen, queen captures, knight f6, check, picks up the queen. Such things uh, are in the position. However, rook to b8 just uh, wins for black because the queen is trapped. Or rather, uh, if you want to save the queen, you will have to give up the knight, either by doing something like this or maybe knight e7, check, and then you make some room for the queen, but still the, the position would be lost. Uh, so instead, uh, after this idea, uh, uh, after this um, bishop, uh, queen to d6, we have bishop to g2. Now the knight is protected. Uh, rook here would make no sense as just queen to c7. The knight is protected. So here Morphy plays e4. And he dares Lowenthal to, to capture the bishop. Uh, but if you capture uh, if you capture the pawn, uh, to again uh, have, uh, have an eye uh, on that knight on d5, uh, then bishop captures rook e8 and you have big problems. Your king is still on e1. So here, uh, instead uh, instead of capturing, we have c4. And this is the only good move for white, and Lowenthal plays it. Lowenthal is like a machine this game. He, he's like, uh, Morphy gave him that one opening, that uh, one opportunity to play g4. And uh, from that moment on, it's all it's all Johan Jakob. Uh, so here, uh, the knight is defended. If you capture Al Passant, then just the knight captures. Nothing really happening here. Uh, so after c4, Morphy goes for f5. He is now going all in. There's no going back. Uh, and queen to b4. Now Lowenthal wants to trade queens. We have queen to e5 and now queen to e7. Again, with the queen trade offer, bishop e6 and queen to, uh, sorry, wrong queen. Queen to c7 now offering the queen trade. Queen g7, you can't really avoid it. Uh, not, not much squares left. So here Morphy says, okay, we trade, but we trade on my terms. So I can at least get my knight back into the game. So queen captures, knight captures, and now knight to b6. Attacking the rook while also saving the pawn and also preparing to advance the pawn as the c8 square is covered also by the knight. So rook a b8 and c5. Fixing everything. We have knight to h5 by Morphy. Again, bringing the knight back into the game. But now b4. Defending the passed pawn. So you don't have to worry about anything on the queen side anymore. And king f7. Now Morphy starts bringing the king into the game. Uh, and castles by Lowenthal. We have g5. And now rook to d1. Going after the pawn here. And uh, while you could play d3, uh, it, it is a possibility just f3 breaks up the pawn chain. Uh, so here Morphy decides to go for something radical. He plays rook f to d8, first defends the pawn, but gives up the g5 pawn. So he wants to open up the g file. Uh, and like I said, Morphy is all in as of this point. So bishop captures and now rook back to g8. Uh, would be great if you could grab hold of the g file. So h4 defending that bishop and now rook g6. Morphy gives yet another pawn to get the other rook to the g file and he's betting, putting uh, all his hopes on this h6 move that the bishop will move and you will bust open on the g file and emerge victorious. However, rook captures on d4 by Lowenthal, uh, rook b to g8 and now now comes knight to d7, threatening knight to e5 with this beautiful fork. And uh, should Morphy capture, then it's just check and you don't have time to push h6. King f8 and now rook a to d1. Uh, and it's all over. If you, if you go for h6, which is basically your only counter plan, just rook b7, threatening checkmate. And now you have to abandon the plan of capturing the bishop. So you have to go help out with the defense, but just check captures uh, or even rather you could first deliver check bishop captures on h6 check and the king has nowhere to go you're gonna have to block knight g7 but then just uh, pretty much anything anything goes just captures captures and now you can capture here uh you're up so much material you don't you don't even care you're up to you're up a bishop pair which is not very often uh, seen in chess 
So after knight d7, Morphy decides to go for rook captures on g5, a last uh, resort move. Uh, but we have h captures on g5, rook captures, and now king to h2. So unpinning. And uh, okay, Morphy still has some pressure here, uh, two pieces and a rook and some pawns in front of the white king. But he's down a whole rook, so it's not going to be easy. Knight f4, preparing to capture here. And bishop to f1, controlling uh, all the squares the knight has. Rook h5, check, king g3. And now knight to d5, preparing f4. Uh, so of course, Lomental plays f4 himself. E captures on f3, en passant, and now knight to, uh, knight to e5 with check. Uh, king f6, and now knight captures on f3, recapturing the pawn with the knight. We have rook to h6, and now rook to e1. Uh, now, uh, saying, okay, uh, I'm going to position my rooks nicely. If you move the knight, I'm just going to play rook d6, attack the pin bishop. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. So rook g6, check by Morphy, king f2, and now knight to c3. Uh, Morphy goes after the a2 pawn, uh, but uh, Lowenthal just allows it. He plays bishop to d3. He says, okay, if you go after the pawn, I'm just going to play rook d6, and that's it. You can't even uh, unpin or anything. I mean, it's just game over. If you unpin to defend with the rook, just uh, 95 check, picks up the rook. So after bishop d3, Morphy played bishop to d5. Uh, but now comes bishop captures on f5. Uh, a nice clean idea. Uh, saying that, okay, if you capture, I'm up so much material that, that I can even give you a full piece just to go knight h4 check, win, win uh, the exchange here. King f6, captures, captures, and I have two rooks for a bishop and the knight, of course, completely winning. So after bishop captures on f5, Morphy moved the rook, rook g7, but now rook to f4 was played, and it was in this position that Paul Charles Morphy resigned the game. And it's not some sort of a game where he... I like made a terrible mistake or something. He just allowed for that g4 to happen, and he didn't reply with with that d4 idea, which would uh, which would basically force him to play an end game upon down from basically from the start of the game. So he decided he's gonna go out swinging, and uh, you know went went out swinging. He did. Uh, but yeah, uh, really crazy stuff here. He resigns because he his king has no squares. This is taken. This is taken by the knight. This is taken by the by the bishop. Uh, this is taken by the rook. So uh, nowhere to go. Nasty discoveries are coming, and you are you are getting checkmated very soon. Just to make it fun, as we are kind of calling this uh, Lowenthal's immortal. Uh, even if you try king f7 to try and find some sort of a safe heaven, just bishop captures on h7 is checkmate, as these two squares are covered. The rooks are slicing all the way here. Uh, there's nothing to be done here. So excellent game by Loventhal, finding that G4 idea, brilliant stuff, and seeing everything uh, very, very incredible. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, 11th game. Uh, the result is now uh, 8 wins Morphe, 3 wins Loventhal, so anything can still happen. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Kimura, Andreas Weidinger, uh, Ivy, Nicholas Kifa, and uh, Ivan Sterling for your uh, contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.